evening, Rockland. Welcome to the school committee meeting of Monday, January 14th, 2019. First on tonight's agenda is the acceptance of the meeting minutes of our meeting of December 10th, 2018. Do we have a motion? I, I wasn't here, so both of us were oh, not so here. It's me. So it's I'm not used to making motions. Mm -hmm. I make a motion to accept the main minutes. And a second. Oh, you don't, we, we won't be able to do that. that. I'm sorry, you weren't here either. So we will have to uh, table. table that table until next time. Week. We won't have a quorum to vote on that. Or Mr. Mills is with us tonight, by the way. Mr. Mills isn't feeling well, and uh, we'll wish him the very best on a quick recovery. Next on, next on tonight's agenda, that being said, would be our superintendent's <coughs> report. Dr. Cron. Thank you. I just have two budget items to report. Uh, first is we have two boilers in need of replacement one at the Aston School and one at the Middle School High School project um, complex. The estimated cost is $75,000. And just to let you know, we currently spend on average an average of forty dollars to $50,000 a year maintaining, both boil bo maintaining the boilers in the entire district. But those two boilers that we are in need of are estimated to cost around $75,000. Um, the second budget item to report is we've found that homeless transportation costs are up substantially this year. Based on previous years, we budgeted for this year $50,000 for homeless transportation. Um, it's only January and we've already spent $48,578 on homeless transportation. We have a forecast for the rest of the year that will cost us approximately $127,000 for this school year for homeless transportation alone. And to give you an idea of how much that's how much that's increased, 2016 we spent 29,400, 2017 we spent 24,400, and just last year we spent only 19,000 in homeless transportation. So those costs are up this year. I just wanted to report that to the committee. Uh, Unanticipated. Yes. Homeless transportation. I, I just not so much for us, but maybe the public would like to know. Sure. Well, when it, if a, if a student is deemed homeless, then part of our responsibility as a district is to provide transportation, and those costs um, can be quite excessive. Did you say the boiler in the middle school? A boiler at the middle school and a boiler at the Eston school. The middle school. How mm -hmm. old is that boiler? Probably, yeah, eight years, did I hear eight? Eight years old? Eight year old boiler needs to be replaced. Yeah, that's surprising. That's I was surprised by that too, just being a relatively new building. That's no warranty. Right? No, yeah. not under warranty at this point. We're currently in the process of um, receiving three quotes uh, for services. It has been patched and repaired. It is functional, it is safe. Um, and we're hopeful to replace it during the school vacation week, both of the boilers during the school vacation. That's, that's disappointing, and not that what you just said, but the, right. the replacement of a boiler that, of that age is, is yeah. that's, that's I, a shame. I think uh, most would agree that if it costs a little bit more to get something that's gonna last, that would be something to really look at, too. Yeah. We don't wanna be doing this five years from now, eight years from now, again, on a brand new building. Another reason why I was so blessed to have Mr. Shaw with us. I'm Absolutely. Sure he's very knowledgeable about such things and I'm sure we'll be in good hands with, and that's, and with that's whatever all. solution might be. That's my report. Very good. Thank you very much, Dr. Cron. Uh, next up, we have some good news. We love good news. Um, sometime last week, I heard some news about a very, very special young man who lives here in Rockland. Um, Heard him on, saw him on the news, or saw him talked about in our schools. I know Chief Duffy came to visit the Eston School and talk a little bit about uh, my new friend who I just had to, the chance to meet just a minute ago, Mr. Joshua Joseph. And um, it, Mrs. Smith is showing a um, front page article in the Herald uh, with our friend Josh over there. And maybe um, when uh, Josh comes up in just a second, maybe Mrs. Smith, you'll come up with them and talk a little bit about Josh and show us that article. But I know um, this entire committee is very excited to meet you. Um, and I know the rest of the town is probably very excited to meet you and hear your very cool story because we're all very, very, very proud of you, Josh. So welcome. Why don't we have you come on right up, okay? I'm going to make sure you don't fall, okay? 
So this is Josh Joseph, and I'm introducing him tonight because his dad's at work, and his mom's a nursing student, um, so she couldn't be here as well. So they kindly lent him to me so that I could bring him to you. Um, this all started last Tuesday at our annual, our annual, our monthly community meeting, where we recognized student achievement. Officer Schnabel had told us back in December Officer Schnabel, our school resource officer, checks the police logs every weekend. And he comes to school and he lets us know if there's been any situations at any houses. So he told us about a situation at, John's, at, at Josh's house and that um, we should be aware of that in case he was upset for anything. Josh told Ms. Seitler, his teacher, who's here with him tonight as well, um, just randomly that he had to call 911 and then when we got with Officer Schnabel and I confirmed that with him, he said Josh was very brave and that he wanted to give him from the police officers an award. So I said, that's wonderful. In the first Tuesday of the month, we have our community meeting. We'll do it then. Um, I kind of forgot about it and texted Officer Schnabel and Dr. Cron on Sunday afternoon and said, are we still giving Josh that award on Tuesday? And they both said yes. So we decided that we would call um, the high school journalist, Mal, the teacher, Leanne Cott, yep. And she came and she took some pictures. We sent them to our publicist and everybody loved the story. The first thing that broke was this picture on the Boston Herald the next day. And we were just, I've been like, like he's mine. I've been on cloud nine. All the teachers have. Miss McDonald, his first grade teacher, is here today. We're just so proud of him. And he's just so mature and so poised and so kind and so loving and such a great big brother. Um, so why don't you, you want to ask, ask him some questions? Well, you want yeah, him to tell you? Just real quick, I'm sure these, uh, th these ladies and gentlemen you. have some questions too, but I just wanted to kind of highlight a couple of reasons why we wanted to have you here, Josh, was first of all, we wanted to recognize you for doing such a mature thing at such a young age for you to know that you needed to call 911 to do the appropriate thing in an emergency situation is a really big of you and that's something that a lot of folks your age maybe younger might not have been able to do but it's really cool that you were able to do that so we wanted you here to say thank you and say great job for what you did and applaud you for it but for the other reason also is because you were a hero not only once but what you might not realize is that you might be a hero many times down the road in the future because there might be another child that saw you on the news or that read about you in the Herald or there may be even one person or two that's watching this meeting tonight who will see you and know that when something happens that they too need to call 911. So you just showed by example what you need to do in an emergency situation. So I hope that my boys are watching at home right now and they get to see what you did and I hope that a lot of other kids are at home getting to see what you did and know what to do. So great job. I know we're really all very, very proud of you. Does any other ladies and gentlemen on the committee have any questions for Josh? First, I wonder, how did you get that call, Josh? <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations, guy, really. I've been reading about it in the papers, saw it on TV. Uh, you're, you should be proud of yourself, and I'm sure your folks are very proud of you, too, as are your teachers and your principal. Uh, it's just uh, what a great opportunity and what a smart, smart man you've become to be able to do that. So thank you. I just want to add one other thing. The Boston Celtics contacted us. Oh, wow. Um, Josh is going to go to the Boston Celtics game with his family on February 9th, where he's going to be presented the Heroes Among Us, Heroes Heroes Among us. Among us Award. It's a great yep. ceremony. Wow. It's a great ceremony. And um, Josh has already been writing about the Boston Celtics prior to this happening about meeting the Boston Celtics and inviting them over for dinner? Is that what your story was about? Oh. So sure. he's going to go back and work on that and maybe present that to the Boston Celtics when he goes and shares his story with them. Well, so. he's, al he's already as tall. Right. right. He could play soon. <laughs> Any other questions from the committee? Comments? Okay. I, uh, I think it's amazing that you knew what to do and to stay as calm as you did. I know adults who can't process that in an emergency situation. Um, I would have to say, I wish your parents were here, but I know they're watching it, that they have done an outstanding job raising you. And your sister is 
extremely lucky to have you as our big brother looking over. So hats off. And I mean, if you get any more national headlines, I'll just keep putting it on my Facebook page. I, I think I think your face has been on my Facebook page pretty steadily for the last week. So if you want to keep that up. When the Celtics comes, I'll have that up there for you too. So hats off, great job. And I know your parents are real proud of you. Be sure to let them know that they can find you on this meeting. They can watch this again. I know they're busy doing, you know, working hard tonight, but uh, they'll be able to see at the school committee meeting on the WRPS YouTube channel too. So thank you for being here with us tonight, Josh. We're really proud of you. Great job. Thanks for being a great kid. Thank you, Mrs. Smith. Thank you. He's nationally famous. Yeah. Okay, next up on tonight's agenda under item four, we have our monthly reports for December. We'll be entertaining four reports for uh, reports on administrators, guidance, nurse, and pupil personnel services. Four motions. Four seconds. We have four motions and four seconds. All those in favor? That is a vote. Thank you very much. Next up, for your information, we have our school newsletters. We have six newsletters, and as always, very colorful, very informative. Love seeing our kids and our kids' friends and our friends and neighbors in here and all the awesome things happening in Rockland schools. Keep it up, kids. Keep it up, everybody. Thank you so much. Um, next up, under item C, for your information, are building rentals for the month of December. Our uh, buildings are continuing to be busy with all kinds of winter events, and we hope they continue to be as such. As always, please contact Mrs. Penny in the administration office for any building needs that you may, may, you may have. Next, under old business, we have some completed fundraisers, and we have some very good ones and successful ones. Um, the Harvard Model Congress had a Panera Bread sale that raised $202.64. The RMS Pack had a bake sale and book fair. The bake sale raised $556.50. And the book fair raised $1,010.49 in scholastic dollars. The Eston Pack had a Scripps gift card sale, which raised $431. The Service Learning Club had four events. They had a bake sale that raised $191, a bracelet sale that raised $647, Players Dine Out that happened to get canceled, Hilliard's Chocolate, which surprise, raised $1,188. Uh, the junior class had a bake sale that raised $113. The class of 2022 had to cancel their water bottle sale. And the National Honor Society sold gift cards, which raised $361.80. Great job, everybody. Next up, item six, under new business. We have a request for approval of the 2019 and 2020 program of studies. And I know we do have Dr. Harrison here with us tonight. Welcome, Dr. Harrison. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for having me here tonight to discuss. I can't believe the 2019-2020 program of studies changes. It's amazing. When you start thinking about next year in January, that just goes to show you all the planning that goes in to the process. And I want to thank our faculty, our students, our site council, which is our faculty, students, and parents uh, for their help putting the changes together for the program of studies. Uh, just to go over um, the changes with you. Hopefully you have a one-page or two-page document that just highlights the changes. It's a chart. Uh, the first change uh, is that in art, uh, we're going to remove the foundation. We're proposing that we remove foundations of art. What we found was foundations of art became a barrier for a lot of the students who wanted to take the other art courses. So if you didn't get foundations of art on your schedule, then you couldn't take these other electives that were offered. So a lot of the kids got blocked out of a lot of great art electives. So the art teachers are confident that if we eliminate the foundations course, kids can jump into the other courses and do just quite fine. Uh, so you'll see we added, we separated two courses as well. Photography and digital imaging used to just be one course. We've separated it to photography and digital art. We've also made Advanced Art 1 only open to grade 11 and 12. We found sophomores weren't quite ready for that as, um, at that time. In business, uh, we haven't offered these courses the past two years just because of staffing, uh, but Intro to Business and Accounting we pulled out of the Program of Studies for the time being. Part of it is because when you put it in the Program of Studies and the students think it's going to be offered, it in, they select it as an elective and then they don't get it, it impacts their course selections in a negative way. So if we know we don't have the staffing at this time to run it, pulling it before we start the process just makes uh, sense. Uh, we do have intentions to run it in a future year should our staffing change. Uh, but our math teacher that currently has taught it a few years ago 
Uh, math is one of those subject areas that we try to keep our class sizes as low as possible. Um, in English, fantasy and science fiction, we try to rotate a lot of the electives out. It doesn't mean they're going away forever, but over a student's four years, we try to bring it back in some capacity. So fantasy and science fiction will be rotated out in English. We wanted to add film studies and creative writing back into the program of studies. Uh, world language would like to remove Spanish for college prep. We added that back in last year on a trial basis, and the teachers uh, and I both felt that if you get to Spanish four, we wanted to give you honors credit. These kids do not have to take a fourth year or a third year of world language. There's only a two-year requirement. But if you do elect to choose a world language, we felt it was only uh, fair to give you that honors credit. So we removed the college prep because uh, taking a world language is definitely a lot of work. Uh, music and performing arts, we, add an we want to add an elective called Introduction to Theater. We feel there's a lot of interest in theater, and the students have opportunities to participate after school in the fall play and the spring musical, but we thought it'd be great to offer an elective, and we feel we have the staffing in-house to do that. Uh, so there'll be no staffing changes needed for that change. Science, uh, physics honors, we wanted to add in. Right now we have an AP physics in a college prep physics, so we wanted to add a physics honors. We feel we there was a large gap between advanced placement and college prep that the science department would like to narrow um, by offering the honors level. Animal behavior is a new elective. Um, history and social science, Mr. McAllister, our department chair, one of the things he's been looking at closely is the number of students taking history for four years. And we were disappointed when we looked over our program of study, our, our enrollments, to realize only 19 students were taking a history, four years of history. And we thought that was concerning. We think with colleges, they want to see four years of history. So we felt we owed it to our students to offer another alternative to AP psychology. So we wanted to add honors European history into the program of studies as a fourth year history. We offer a lot of popular electives in world in history, but we felt we needed a full year, fourth year um, course for students. Ro sociology will be rotating out, and rotating in is history and film. So we try to rotate those electives in and out so that over the course of those four years, students have opportunities to take a ton of courses. Um, construction technology, we had a new staff member this year. So we just did some name changing. Woodworking one changed to beginning woodworking. Woodworking 2 changed to intermediate woodworking. And then we wanted to add advanced woodworking. We were creative in those names. And then removing structures and shed design as an elective. Um, computer science. We used to have a, we wanted to remove computer science 1 and add two electives to replace that. Intro to JavaScript and web design and cybersecurity. Uh, the reasoning behind this is if you take, we have the advanced placement computer science this year for the first time. It's gone very well. But computer science and advanced placement, advanced placement computer science are virtually the same course, just one's a little bit more intense. So a student who's interested in computer science right now is taking computer science and advanced computer science, and they're learning very similar content. So now a student interested in computer science is able to take an advanced placement course, as well as two electives, which are different than that advanced placement curriculum. Having said that, just a separate note is, um, We've been partnering with the South Shore Workforce. This is just a s separate plug. Um, the South Shore Workforce Development Board and one of our students got an internship um, and an opportunity to earn 19 credits at Bristol Community College. And I share this with you because it's in cybersecurity. So it's a real neat opportunity for our, our s a student who's interested in computer science. And he wouldn't have had this opportunity. So he's going to get 19 credits at Bristol Community College, a full-time paid summer internship in cybersecurity. And um, it's just a great, anyway, it's a hot field is what I'm trying to get at. But a good opportunity for our student. Um, and lastly, you may remember last year we added advanced placement seminar. Next year we're going to be adding AP research. So what that is, is AP seminar is the first year of a two-year research course through College Board. Uh, we were kind of, at, I think, ahead of the curve on this. A lot of schools are jumping in to this course. Uh, and there's a waiting list to get into this course. It's a two-year program where you can earn what they call an AP capstone, which is kind of a separate advanced placement version of diploma. So AP seminar, you learn how to do research. AP research, with the help of an advisor, uh, which is Ms. Hoyo, you'd be able to go and do your own independent research project under her direction, and it's graded by College Board. So it'll... Um, just an independent uh, grading through that. So it's, it's kind of a rigorous advanced placement course where it's the kids have to do that portfolio-based assessment versus the traditional paper and pencil assessment. 
Two other changes I did glance over at the beginning, which I wanted to bring your attention to. Uh, on page five of the program of studies, we used to allow, I'm proposing to change this, but we previously allowed seniors to carry, to take pretty much two studies on their schedule if they took three or more advanced placement courses. Two studies I really feel is a lot. I'd like to just make it one study like everybody else. I find if you look at their transcript and they're only taking five courses and two studies for their seven, I think that's hurting them when they apply to colleges. And as a student, it's hard to take three advanced placement courses, but it's not necessarily in your best interest if you need two studies to take the three advanced placement courses. It may be too much for you. But if you're thinking a certain college and on your transcript, having five versus six is not going to look favorably. So the kid wouldn't know that, and if they would take the two studies if they didn't know that. So we thought just pull that out of the program of studies makes the most sense. And then on page nine, there's a neat component Ms. Black worked really hard on. It's creating college pa career pathways for students. So on page nine, if you look at, and we're going to keep adding to this every year as we learn more and do more research, but College Board actually reveals this on their website when you search careers. So if you were interested in forensic science, it has the helpful high school courses that we offer at Rockland High School to help that student understand that if I'm interested in forensic science, these courses may enlighten my exposure. So under there you'll see English, AP Biology, AP Chemistry, Statistics, and Calculus are all courses that would help you further your learning in forensic sciences. So that was just a neat change programmatically to help parents and students feel uh, what courses are getting you more exposed to certain areas. So those are the changes we're proposing. I think the staff and the students and the, the parents did a great job throughout the process. It was very collaborative. Excellent. Any questions for Dr. Harrison in our program of studies? Um, Dr. Harrison has asked that we waive our first reading of this. Um, and I just want to also comment, um, I know how much work goes into this and how much work in preparation and um, it's exciting all the opportunity that you can see yeah. within this for Rockland students. Uh, but any questions, comments on the program of studies for the committee, from the committee? A lot of hard work, and I'd make a motion that we waive the first reading. Second. All those in favor? Uh, that is a vote. Thank, thank you, you very much. Thank, thank you, Dr. Harrison. Great job. Okay, next up, and always an exciting agenda item we have once a year, is the request for approval of the Rockland High School graduation date. Mm -hmm. it's this year, um, we have a letter here from Ms. Ellis that sh we are res respectfully requesting that Friday evening, May 31st, 2019, be the official date of Rockland High School graduation, which always is guaranteed to be a wonderful weather and beautiful night, I think. Isn't that correct? <laughs> I think so. All right. Um, any comments on the date? Questions about it? Question, Mr. Gravel? We need to, we didn't approve program of studies. We just waived the first reading. Oh, yeah. thank you. So, I just want to. So we waived the first reading. Okay, then why don't we go ahead and uh, make a motion to approve the second. So All the, second. The second. All those in favor. Thank you very much. Sorry not to jump on your feet there. Yeah. Okay, uh, back to the graduation date. I respectfully request that the evening of May 31st, 2019 be the official date of graduation for Rockland High School. Any comments or questions? Motion. And a second. All those in favor? That is a vote. Thank you very much. Uh, next up, we have a request for approval of fundraisers. Um, we have the Travel Club making a request for a prize calendar uh, that will run through January and March, and the SPED pack that will have a toll booth in May. Questions or comments from the committee? Mm -hmm. We'll be entertaining two motions. Two motions. Two seconds. All those in favor? That is a vote. Thank you. Next up, 2019 Spring Night School courses, in which we've got some exciting offerings as usual. Um, sewing for spring and summer, there'll be two sessions, Reiki Level 1, the Dance Workout, Monks Cloth Afghans, again, which there'll be two sessions, Introduction to the Tarot 5 Reading with Patty Sheets, uh, Quilting, Golfer Program, Eccentrics, Gentle Yoga, develop it, um, Developing Your Inner Intuitive Self, Hands Only CPR, Heart Saver with AED and First Aid, Zumba, and Pound. Uh, we'll be entertaining a motion to approve the Rockland Community Education Adult Classes. So moved. All those in favor? That is a vote. Thanks very much. Next up, we have the request for approval of the daycare contract. Dr. Cron, anything you'd like to highlight about it? No, just 
uh, they're an exceptional group of educators, and uh, I'm glad that we were able to reach a contract so 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 quickly together. Excellent. <clears throat> Anybody make make a motion to I approve make that? A motion. And we have a second. I second. All those in favor? Aye. That's a vote. Thanks so much. Next up, we have the request for a donation. Dr. Cron. Yes, we have a donation from the Exxon Mobile Educational Alliance Program. The um, Rockland Public Schools were nominated to receive a $500 grant from uh, Exxon Mobile. And uh, we thank them very much and we'll put that money to good use if we accept it. Excellent. Any questions? No. Motion we accept. Second. All those in favor? That's a vote. Thanks very much. Assume you send a thank you and all of that. Yes. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Next up tonight under item G, we have the request of approval of a memorandum of agreement. Dr. Cron. Yes. I think I'll invite Dr. Harrison to come up and speak to you about this. Thank you. Uh, in front of you, you have a memorandum of an agreement uh, proposal that um, I've been working with our faculty on. And just to kind of explain how it came about, there were kind of two priority areas we wanted to address as a staff that we feel we can always improve on. One of the goals of the guidance department this year and our whole faculty is to improve the grade eight to grade nine transition. And one of the things we felt this year that was very successful that we really shook things up this year with our open house for grade nine, for grade eight students and families. So we had a very um, excellent turnout. We had a, about 30 staff volunteer and gave up a night. They came here and they worked with students and they showcased the high school. And we changed the format to make it very active for students. Um, but it wouldn't necessarily be fair to ask faculty to come every year. Um, that kind of a turnout um, on a volunteer, voluntary basis. Uh, one of the things that we think this event is so important, we think it's so important for eighth grade families, maybe even seventh grade families, to come and see the high school early on. And we feel like if we don't have our faculty there, um, we're not showing Rockland High School on its best day, because our staff and our students are what drive us to make us what we are, a great school. So that's the first reason, is really to improve the grade eight to grade nine transition. The second area is that our attendance on the spring parent conferences is very low. Uh, to just give you a few pieces of data, and bear with, that, bear with me that every teacher, some teachers have more heavier load on conference night than other teachers, so a math teacher and English teacher tends to be more full than some of our elective teachers. But if I average it, um, our average staff member sees about nine or 10 conferences for each teacher. That's very low. If you think about a five hour, two and a half hours in the afternoon, two and a half hours in the evening, to see nine parents throughout that afternoon and evening is very low. Now again, some teachers see 20, some teach two, some see two parents. So just keep that in mind. But averaging about nine or 10 in the spring. In the fall, we see about 16 or 18 per um, teacher. So just keep in mind the fall is not nearly as bad as the spring. So our low, no, I don't want to say low interest because I, I personally feel um, there's a good connection between most of our parents and teachers, but I think the communication needs to be early on. If you have a parent conference in April, I think that's way too late. Uh, we have the conferences in November, but the, con the communication needs to be fluid, it needs to be constant, it needs to be frequent. It can't wait until April. So if a kid is failing in high school, we have the credit. So if a kid's failing and they're not getting a 65, if you find that out as a parent in April, that's way too late. So I want our culture at the high school to be um, that we're not waiting to have a parent meeting until April. So I just want, um, I don't really truly feel there's a huge need for a spring parent-teacher conference. So what I'd like to propose, and I've worked with our faculty to craft this and department chairs, is that we swap the evening responsibility for the spring parent conferences for um, an evening responsibility for faculty, which is the, uh, the open house, which I just spoke to for grade eight families, uh, and maybe even expanding it to other grades at the middle school. One thing I will say, though, is there's never a time every teacher in our building will always meet with the parent, always. So there's never, we don't turn down any parent. So just keep that in mind um, as well. Excellent. Questions or comments from the committee? Well, I have no problem with this. I, I think it's a great idea. Very good. Hmm. Dr. Cron, comments, recommendation? I, I totally agree. Great. Uh, do we have a motion? So move. And a second. All those in favor? Right, thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Harrison. That's great. 
Next up, under item H, we have a request for approval for the North River Collaborative Agreement. Dr. Cron. I recommend we vote to accept, or you vote to accept, the memorandum of agreement. Excellent. Do we have a motion? I have a question. Go right ahead. Sorry. This is Maroney. Oh, please. <laughs> is that, how does that benefit us, where we started this? Is having adding Holbrook in, does it benefit Rockland? Um, I just, I don't think I know enough, so I was curious. North, so North River serves a variety of communities. I think it doesn't necessarily benefit us directly. It's definitely beneficial to the collaborative and its financial health overall. Okay. So that does help us indirectly. Um, but I, I think Holbrook is an excellent fit for us geographically and, and socioeconomically. So um, I, I support the addition of, positive. definitely a positive, absolutely. I didn't about the program, so yeah, I want to No, that's okay. Any other questions, comments? No, I would just compliment you on being a member of this board. Uh, it, it, to me, and I'll admit it, it was overwhelming. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it's like running uh, another total school. Uh, uh, there's so much to it. Just count the buses. I mean, it's, it's unbelievable. So figure with the finances and all involved in that, all the bidding process and everything else that goes with it. No, so, no, they do a great job. Uh, it's just it, it, it can be overwhelming. It was for me. Very good. Do we have a motion? And a second? And a second. All those in favor? That's a vote. Thanks very much. Next up under item I, we have grants and revolving accounts. Dr. Cron. Um, as you know, we're busy preparing our FY20 school budget, and I just wanted to remind the committee that over 10% of this year's operating budget is being funded by revolving funds and grants. So in addition to those funds paying salaries, we also use them for one-time expenses. So for example, this year, we're using funds from our building rental account to fund the resurfacing of the middle school and the high school gymnasium floors, as well as the replacement of a broken glass backboard at the high school. Um, this year, circuit breaker funds are being used to fund tuitions for out of district placements. Um, and at the end of this month, I just wanted to let you know at the end of this month, you will receive the updated balance sheets that we'll be using for the remainder of uh, fiscal year 19 budget and for our FY20 budget projections. So I just wanted to bring that back to the attention of the committee. Thank you very much, Dr. Cron. You're welcome. Last but not least on our um, agenda tonight, as always, is public service announcements. And as always, we Go with ladies first. So we have our student representative, Ms. Jasmine Morse. Jasmine, welcome, and got anything for us tonight? Um, just congratulations to Josh's family. Amazing kid. Love hearing stories like that. And also good luck to all the um, high schoolers that are going to be taking midterm exams tomorrow. Excellent. Thank you, Jasmine. Mrs. Maroney. Um, first, um, I'd like to read that Kindergarten Information Night is Wednesday, January 23rd at 6 p.m in the Rockland High School Auditorium. The child must be five years old um, by August 31st. Um, and I also wanted to say um, thank you to the 400 plus voters um, that came out last Monday for the special town meeting. Um, last year doesn't reflect what Rockland is all about. Um, Bulldog pride runs deep and Rockland is growing. Great people are stepping up um, to move Rockland forward and last Monday night was the first step this year. Um, Rockland is our town, and it's good to show that we believe in it and want it to move forward. Well said. I agree. Thank you very much. Mr. Phelps. Just on a personal note, I want to apologize to the Rockland community for being truant much too often. Uh, I love this job. I, I, uh, I hope maybe I can continue it, but uh, as I said, I just apologize for not being at many of the events that I would want to be at and I missed a couple of three school committee meetings and I just want people to know that uh, I'm doing a lot better. Thank you. And we're very happy for that. Absolutely. Absolutely. Mr. Phelps, we're happy you're here with us. Mr. Garofalo. Yes, it is great to see you back. Thank you, sir. So I'm glad to see that. Um, I'd like to wish everyone a happy new year. Um, please remember that there is, oh, oh, borrow a section from a former member here. Please remember that there is some nasty viruses going around right now. Um, so please 
wash your hands and do everything you can to not spread any of that stuff because it will wipe out an entire house for a week. Um, and other than that, I here we might have snow and I hope not. So I'm with that. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Garofalo. All right, I've got some things to say that maybe are a little bit different than most um, things I've shared with you in the past. Um, this past week, nomination papers for open seats in this year's Rockland local elections were made available in town clerk Donna Shortle's office. After two terms, six years, three of those as chairman of this board, I wish to share with you, my colleagues, my friends, and my neighbors, that I will not be seeking re-election to a third term on Rockland School Committee. As many of you may know, life has hit my family particularly hard in the last few years. The last year has been particularly difficult, having lost my father and my business partner at my family's firm, Magoon Biggins Funeral Home. The loss of my dad left not only a void in my heart, but also in the day-to-day -day workings of my family's firm. Because it is my primary responsibility to do what is best for my own family, and secondarily for continuing the Biggins family's mission and tradition of serving others in their greatest time of need, it is in those areas that I need to dedicate in earnest all of my efforts. I am incredibly proud of the town of Rockland and the people that live in it. I know that many of you feel the same way. I am also aware that there is a great many people with the gifts and the talents to aptly represent our town and our schools on this school committee. I sincerely hope that some of these fine people will consider dedicating of themselves to serving their town and our schools by running for an elected seat on this board. My time is not over yet. The time for goodbye is not now, as my work is not yet done. We can save that for my last meeting. I promise to serve with vigor and integrity until my very last day on the job. Uh, my service concluding to this school committee does not mean my service to this town will stop. I will continue to serve in many other ways, albeit by coaching or helping neighbors or maybe even in an elected role sometime down the road in the future. But for now, it's going to be my job to continue uh, the job that my dad taught me how to do, which is celebrating people's lives in the best way that I possibly can here in town, serving my neighbors, and being the best dad and husband that I can be. So with that, we'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion. Second. All those in favor? That's a vote. Thank you very much. God bless you, Rockland.